we will get started in just a second. I gotta get, like, one thing together, and then we can get the party moving. So I will be right back, as I say, wave hand. Boom. All right. Oh, I forgot to put the stream starting soon text up on this, but uh, I just learned about this, and it's a shame, man. Uh, let me flip my webcam on so you can... Yeah, there you go. Into the Wolves' Lair. It's the only volume of the Golgo 13 manga that I have. This is a version, this edition was published... When was it? It was like 1986 or something, man. It's crazy. 60 million copies in print. Like, this was so long ago. They're trying to justify, like, why you would want to buy a graphic novel. It's just full of absolutely gorgeous stuff. Some of which has symbolism I probably can't show on YouTube. But the whole thing is just a beautiful, very serious book. It really is. And it's all due to the guy you see on Wikipedia right here. This guy started making stuff back all the way like in, what, the 50s or something, man? When he was a very young dude. Yeah, debuted with his first manga in 1955. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. We'll get on with like the new comic book day stuff in a minute, but... I kind of wanted to just highlight this, because... When I saw this, it, uh... It really brought me down, man. I, I was like, that sucks. Not that I've read all of Golgo 13 or anything. Uh, in fact, I think this might be the only volume I've actually read. But I've watched the two movies. I watched part of that anime series that, like, about 20 episodes of the anime series that came out, uh, the 2010, 2011, something like that. Played the NES game when I was a kid. Like, that kind of really just brought it out, brought it to me, was uh, that particular game. And, uh, yeah. It's uh, been a bad year for Mangaka, hasn't it? Like, the Berserk guy, Miura. Now this fine gentleman. <laughs> yeah. Although, uh, maybe gentleman's not the appropriate word, but, you know. Don't speak ill of the dead and all that, right? So, total kind of crummy thing. Look at this. Years active to 2021. Like, this dude is just going for it, man. Order the Rising Sun 4th class gold raids with Rosette. Like, this dude was some serious business. You know? That's what, uh... That's what Golgo, like, means. Like, it's long running. It's, uh. What's the correct term? Venerable. Like, it's been around the block a few times. Selected works. Look at all this. And look which one goes all the way to the present. Golgo 13. Oh, man. I gotta read more of this stuff. Like, that's all I know is I gotta go find an excuse to read more of this stuff. Uh, thank you for the likes, by the way. Whoever's been dropping those likes on the stream. I appreciate that. Much love. And let me flip on 
want to put those little overlay ads up on the stream too. There we go. So if you see a little like text thing that's kind of semi-transparent pop up at the bottom of the screen here, I put it there. It's cool. So in the 80s, he sold 60 million copies. Now he's up to 300 million. Man, this is crazy. I was going to say, isn't this like the second best-selling manga? And there it is. It says right there. I wonder what the number one is. Is it One Piece? Has One Piece sold like a billion or something? Oh, called it! Absolutely called it. I'm a madman. That is so many books. That is so, so many books. Congratulations to all these people, by the way, for selling this much stuff. Yeah, I got a volume of Detective Conan somewhere. Anyway, go go 13. I, I keep harping on this because I want you to go read it, man. This stuff was good. The movies are pretty good. But I really like this TV show, 2008 to 2009. I almost remembered the right date. Almost. I'm going to flip away from showing my monitor for just a second here. Oh, we can get rid of that stream starting soon. Boop! There we go. Because I'm just going to open up another window and make sure the stream is actually live. I see it. I've got like two likes and all that. But I don't know how I can get likes. Because I'm just going to open Whoop. up another window and make sure... Go away. There we go. I don't know how I can get likes without any concurrent viewers started streaming. Okay. So yeah, we are live. Sorry for the double talk there. Not intended. That was not something I wanted to do. Hi. <laughs> the opening theme, Take the Wave. Yeah, this was a pretty good show. I watched um, a lot of these. One of these had... Uh, uh, it took place in... Oh, man, I don't remember. It was like in a football game, and he had to kill somebody, and he had, like, a plastic gun and a balloon or something ridiculous like that. I remember that one. I remember, uh, one where he was uh, assassinating a guy. Oh, I'm not even showing the right thing on the screen. I'm sorry. Durr. I'm over here talking and showing my monitor, and then I'm not actually showing the monitor. So, yeah, I remember one. Oh, touchdown. Hey, there it is. Rising football star named Lionel Blue. I remember this episode. Using his M16 and a hidden rangefinder after being hired by a da 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 da. Using his M16 and a hidden rangefinder after being. I could have sworn that he killed the guy with like a gun that was in a balloon or something. Maybe I'm thinking of a different episode. Uh, there was another one I remember where. Uh, he had to shoot. Uh, through like two buildings. Like the target was like a mile away between two buildings. And there was like flagpoles and stuff in between the target. And uh, where he was at. Sharpshoot and the G-string. No. Pretty woman. <laughs> Alright, well, I don't see the uh, episode I'm thinking of, but there was a cool episode where he does this crazy, crazy shot. It was, it was a great show. It was a great show. The manga's pretty great. I recommend checking all this stuff out. Alright, there we go. And there's our little memorial to uh, Mr. Saito. Let's, uh... Get back on the grind here, huh? So I saw this. I thought this was a really cool statue. Like, I would never buy this. But I thought this was super cool. And I guess I can get uh, my book out of here. Like, what a great looking statue, am I right? It's absolutely gorgeous. If I was rich or Ninja Weasel would just buy it for me, you know, I would happily uh, live in a world where I had that. Let's see, we'll come back to this stuff at some point, hopefully, maybe. And we'll make fun of what's in the previews catalogs for these companies. Alright, that's quite enough of that. 
See what else did I have to show? Oh yeah, this was funny. So if you remember when uh, the Rags Kickstarter crowdfund was going on, the campaign was called Take the Money and Run. Oh look, the museum says he gave an artist eighty-four thousand dollars in cash. He delivered blank canvases and titled them Take the Money and Run. Brilliant. Yep, and this is how this stuff works too. No, you just don't understand it because you're uncultured. Wow, this guy is bitter. In fact, most businesses are just fronts for something illegal. Wow. I don't know if you can say that. But you do gotta like it. I would do the same thing if I had fine art friends. And lastly, here's some ginger for you. From Illustrator Monk. Alright. That's enough of that. So, whoever's out there, thank you so much for joining me here on our adventure into comic books this week. Uh... I was going through my files and I found this old GIF and I'm surprised I never used this thing more when I was streaming Hotline Miami because this is basically Hotline Miami in a GIF. Like, that's it, man. Uh, I kind of wish there was uh, another Hotline Miami comic coming out, but I guess until then, you know, I can kind of just have to make do with Can't Kill Cade. It's as Hotline Miami as you can get without being the official Hotline Miami wildlife comic book. Already read it. Think I did a review of it already. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, do absolutely check that out. Just looking at some messages here real quick. See if there's anything I needed to respond with or respond to, and there wasn't. So let's get on with the show. So I went to, uh, wow, I forgot the name. I went to Graham Cracker Comics. I got my receipt too today, which is nice. I did not get uh, stiffed on the receipt. And one of the things that you get at Graham Cracker Comics is three books for free, just for walking in the door, taken out of the what used to be the 50 cent bin, but is now the 75 cent bin. So this week cost me... Man, tax hurts. <laughs> tax really hurts. Oh my goodness. Anyway, this week cost me $15.15 after tax. That's a, a little bit of a bummer, man. Who can afford all this stuff? Like, who can afford to pay these taxes? Not me, that's for sure. Anyway, the first book I got out of the 50 cent, or I'm sorry, the 75 cent bin for free is this. And it, okay, you know, you're looking at it, it's like, what is this? And I'm like, I don't know, but Majestic is the publisher, whoever that is. It's a number one, so that clearly means it's worth a lot of money. And I didn't notice it at the time, but I'm noticing it now. Check this out. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That is definitely a pretty cool thing. I don't know if that's intentional or what. Like, it's got to be, right? Like, somebody didn't just take, like, a knife and cut that out, did they? That's got to have been, like, done on purpose by the publisher. But it's weird. They've just carved the cover up a little bit for some reason. I don't know why. So I didn't even, like, flip to the interior of the book. I just saw, like, a publisher I didn't recognize. You know what? It's very 90s, but it's not bad looking. The faces are okay. This dude's muscles are about to explode. Like, he's his biceps are going to pop. I think that happened to a dude, didn't it? I remember reading about that. Like, some guy actually popped his, like, his bicep exploded or something. He was a bodybuilder. So there's some okay looking art in here. Who knows what's going on in the book and if it's worth actually reading. But, just kind of flipping through it. You know, the obvious character here. He's kind of looking like a Superman dude. What about this bomb? A bomb. 
Oh man, now I'm channeling my uh, inner whatever. It doesn't matter. Deus Ex. A bomb. <laughs> That's one of my favorite dumb memes. I didn't have this Eclipso book, so I went ahead and grabbed it. Like, I've got random issues of Eclipso, The Darkness Within, the storyline, and I don't think I had this one already. So I went ahead and grabbed it. Oh, somebody's transforming right there. Becoming evil. Yeah, I don't think she's, uh... Whatever Fox is going to have much of a chance. Because that sure looks like Power Girl to me, right? Is that Power Girl? Like, I can't tell. DC costumes change so much. You know, some characters are iconic, and they, even when they change, you still recognize who they are, like Green Lanterns, because they have the icon. Aquaman, because he always looks like a dork. The Flash is always wearing Speedos. But like, Power Girl, like, her costume has changed a lot over the years. I don't know. I guess I'll find out when I flip through it for reals. And it's been a long time since I pulled... Yeah, a Malibu book out of the 75 cent bin. So I don't think I had this issue of Prime. I didn't bother looking it up. If I do, oh well. I just give it to somebody. But, uh, you know, Prime's not my favorite character, but I'm like slowly working my way through all this Malibu stuff. Wasn't Didn't like the creator of Prime, one of these guys, like... Isn't he weird? Did something bad? Yeah, I don't think I want to dwell on that too much. I think I just want to kind of move on. I just grabbed it because it was a Malibu book. And it was right there. And I'm like, aha! Malibu books. Yeah, baby. Stuff I actually paid for. Robin, number six. Ready? Fight! I actually really like this first page because it kind of captures both a little bit of drama and also like really nails down Damien here. All right, so you got this dude, right? Nightwing embarrassed my brother too many times. I not only fight today to win the League of Lazarus tournament, but I also fight for my brother's honor. Whatever. Just shut up and fight. <laughs> Clap warning. I just clapped. Oh, that makes me happy. Because Damien's a very um, impolite character. And so having him sass somebody like that. I just found a Gemini on the floor. Having him sass somebody like that right before beating him up. That, uh, that amuses me uh, just a little bit. And I appreciate it. I think that's fun. Man, my YouTube bot on my Discord server has been super slow. It has not posted up that this stream started, so maybe I need to uh, drop the link in there. Let me do that, because I don't know if like Ninja Weasel knows that the party started or what. So let me just drop that in there. Alright, anyway, back to Robin. Seriously, is all my notifications like running slow? Is the internet slow today for everybody? Honestly, I felt days like that, haven't you? Where it's like, no matter where you are, what you're trying to do, the internet just seems slow. I was trying to look at... something. Last night. And whatever website I went to was just like... The slowest thing I've ever seen. Like, it was worse than being on dial up. It's amazing. We have all this technology, all this really cool stuff, right? And then we just sit around waiting, like, for minutes for pages to load because pages are so loaded with crap. Like, if I go here to Twitter, right? You know, there's what I want to look at, which is, like, people's tweets. And then there's like, here, let's load this widget, let's load this widget, let's load this widget. Why? Let's load these messages widgets. No, if I want to look at messages, I will open up the messages page. Like, I don't get it. It's crazy. Britney Spears' father is suspended from her conservatorship. Hey, free Britney! Britney's gonna... Man, I should have named my video Free Britney, shouldn't I? That would have got some views. <laughs> 
men only want one thing and it's disgusting. Free Britney. Oh, dude! I flipped the next page over. And it's just a montage of fights. I'm good. I like this book now. I'm not going to look at any of the rest of this. I'm going to leave this open. And I'm going to just check on Twitter, see the notifications. Well, these don't matter. That's a shame. That's a shame. I was hoping the notifications would be amazing. Oh, yeah. This is a, this is a good solid meme here. Flip. Wrong one. Right here. Little Jedi's on board. Anakin. Anakin, don't do it, bro. Don't do it. And uh, did I have one other thing I wanted to show? Oh, it's just my stupid, uh, yeah. Paul, uh, Neon Blart Paul Gellion. Like, I, this is like one of my favorite things on the whole internet right here. It's so dumb. I love it. Maybe they'll make a third Paul Blart film. I could get behind that. I really liked the second one. It was funny. I say that without shame. I know, somebody out there has just been like, No! You can't say that you like... It's okay, man. You can like stupid movies. Like, as long as you understand what you're liking a little bit. You know, you know what you're in for. Like, it's okay. With exceptions. There's always exceptions. Ah, refreshing beverage. Beautiful. That dude's pretty cool looking. I dig it. He looks really cool. So not only are we getting uh, like Mortal Kombated, but we're also just being like, yeah, you know what? Bird demons. Like, who, how can you go wrong with that? Bird, didn't they do this already? Didn't they do that already? Man, DC. Sometimes I think DC ought to just be like, you know what? Forget this. We're just going to make an entirely new universe every year or something. Ha, <laughs> Ninja Weasel chiming in. My dude. You know, I really need to get, like, StreamYard actually working correctly on this PC. I don't know why it doesn't. Because uh, I would really like to just put what he said up in front of everybody here. Because this is great. Ninja Weasel says, Considering I like brain donors, it's kind of a funny movie, I'm with you there, I can't tell people not to like stupid movies. Feel ya, bro. Absolutely 100% feel ya. Let's play something that's killing the children roulette. Will it be good? Will it be bad? I just opened up to... That. That actually made me hiccup. Wow. It was a very quiet hiccup, but wow. I think we're uh, back to something is testing my patience. This looks like we're just getting a ton of backstory in this issue. I think the world probably works better with less backstory. Like, you know one of the things that makes the original John Wick so incredible, aside from all the awesome action, is the fact that we don't understand the world he lives in. We want to know more. And that longing makes it feel more interesting. The more you reveal your mysterious world, the less interesting the mysterious world becomes. You can tell people too much about what's going on. Hey, an Ninja Weasel again with a zinger. Nothing is continuing to not kill these damn children. Right on, brother. How you doing tonight? You been on the road today? What's been up, man? I don't think I've heard from you too much except for the usual meme exchanges and such. Like, you doing all right? You hanging out? You being cool? Hey, speaking of uh, John Wick. Oh, look, there's Keanu Reeves in red. Because red is the color of death and blood. So says Compressor. And if Compressor says it, it must be true. Yeah, I see on uh, Discord. 
Or I was commenting about City Heroes, you're like, it got uncancelled, sorta ish, yeah. And it's being run by a bunch of people who hate fun. But that's neither here nor there. Hey, it's a Dark Admiral March Hare! Welcome to the party! You're like, we're like 20 minutes into the party, but welcome to the party! If you missed the beginning, we were talking about, uh... Dear Departed Mengaka. We can pull that back up real quick. Because I have the power to do so. This is my stream, after all. And if I want to open up... Golgo13 on Wikipedia. I can. You can't stop me. Now, this fine gentleman passed away. He's only been making Golgo13 since the 60s. Number two best-selling anime of all times. Uh, absolutely phenomenal stuff. I was showing off uh, the one volume I own. I really should buy, like, omnibuses for the whole set or whatever, but... You know, I got this beautiful copy from the 80s. Uh, I bought it a couple years ago here in Madison at uh, Capital City Comics. And uh, that's a weird place to shop because nothing has prices. You just kind of pick something up, go up to the counter, and hope that they're not going to rip you off. Which is probably not the best business model uh, for a bookstore to have, but that's how they roll. It's also why I don't go in there very often. I go in like once every other year. See, Ninja Weasel says, I basically live on the road. T-Mobile wants to squeeze every drop out of this stone. It's up in Fayetteville. Wilmington. Okay. I don't know that I would ever have described Fayetteville as being up from somewhere, but okay. Uh, yep, the GoGo13 creator. And you hate those kind of shops? I'm not too partial to it myself either, my man. I'm not partial to it either. Uh, but you know what? When I saw this book there, like I just went in for free comic book day or maybe it was like Halloween comic fest or something. I bought uh, my Junji Ito books uh, at that place on either free comic book day or uh, Halloween comic fest. And I think those were priced per cover, but Older stuff is just kind of like, yeah, we're going to just charge you uh, some mystery value. And I kind of expected it to cost like 15 bucks or something, which I think is what I ended up paying for it. So it's not like I was up there and I got some sticker shock or something, but it also ain't cool, man. You got to let people know what stuff costs before they go to buy it, because how can they make an informed decision about what they want to purchase? Not doing that just means that you're going to lose sales because somebody's going to go, oh man, I'm not paying $17 for that? I'll only pay 12 And now you've lost the sale. When you could have just priced it at $17, and then that person would have had the chance to think about go, hmm, maybe I want it for $17, instead of you slapping them in the face with 17 big buckaroos. I don't know. Maybe this is why I don't run stores. But, uh, yeah, he passed away the other day. I learned about it, uh... I think it, it was last night, but it was technically after midnight, so I think that makes it today. Um, you know, and like I said in my little YouTube short earlier today, uh, we've got decades of good stuff from him to tide us over. You know what I'm saying? And hey, since Ninja Weasel is here now, I'm going to pull this back up. Like, check this out, dude. Check out this little statuette, man. I don't even want to know what this figurine costs, but isn't this, like, just absolutely gorgeous? Like, look at it! Now, what would have been better is uh, Eris with the chair. Just BAM! Let's see, March Hare. Just in a shop in Kitty Hawk that had books on the wall with no price. Didn't even bother with those books just the ones that were priced. I don't blame you. I would do the same thing. I am 100% uh, with you on that one. And injuries lads, uh, man, the details on that are insane. Needs a chair, though. Yeah. 
But it's great. I mean, look at the little toes, dude. Look at these freaking little toes. They're all detailed. Look at all the ruffling and... Oh, it's just... It's a great piece. I don't even know how big this is. Hold on. Can we, uh, click through their website or something here? Please don't dox me. Please don't dox me. Okay. We're not doxed. Makes her appearance in the Static Art Statuette line clan. Her extravagant red dress is certainly an extravagant red dress. It's beautiful. It's incredible. I would agree with that statement. Here we go. Height, 241 mil. Oh my gosh. Why do you... No! Use real units! Yeah! Oh, and the ribbons! You know what? I didn't even really pay that any mind, dude. Oh, look at this. Can, can I zoom in further somehow? Can I? Oh, oh, oh. No, that doesn't zoom in anymore. Oh. Dang, I was hoping it would, like, let me, like, get super in there. Look at the detailing on the front of the dress. I didn't even notice that in the, uh, like, spin around. It's incredible. Look at this. Just, the whole thing as well. It's even got, like, the torque on the arm. Man, I thought it looked good in that little spinny video. The little preview they had. It looks way better static. Like, you can actually focus in on the details and stuff. This is wild. So let's see, it's about... It's 241 millimeters. That's, what, a quarter of a meter. Nine in... Ten inches? Hold on! Wait a minute, what am I doing? I got a ruler here. Let's see. So... Here we go. Alright, so... This is my awesome ruler from DigiKey, by the way. This thing's amazing. Let me flip back to a uh, full screen on the uh, Elgato here, because this ruler is flipping amazing, dude. So let's see, 240-something millimeters. So that puts us right here. And on the other side... Let's see, it's a foot-long ruler. So we go from 12 to 3 inches. Yeah, so about 9 inches tall. Hey, look at that! I can still do metric to standard conversions in my head. Well, this is an amazing ruler. Like, it's got sizes for circuit traces, wires. You ever want to know, like, what the uh, gauge length or the gauge size of something is, man? It's got it. It's got holes for mach machine screws. Like, just all kinds of amazing things. Here, how wide are those circuit traces? You can find out. Especially if the picture was better, which it's not, because there's not enough light in here camera's kind of struggling as it is, but it's a great little ruler. They sent that to me for free, because I uh, had them send me their catalog, and they were just like, hey, have a free ruler. So if I ever need that kind of junk from somebody, I'll probably be buying it from DigiKey. Hey, hey, you're not supposed to just go 25 millimeter to an inch. You can't do that. It's more complicated than that. <laughs> oh, March Hare says, I'd love the Berserk statues, but Price of Insane Sorry, Martucci. Yeah. Uh, I could never get into collecting that kind of stuff just because of the prices. This is. I don't. What does this cost? $200 or 200 pounds. Euros. 200 euros. Can we go back to using Franks and Deutschmarks and stuff? Like. Those make more sense. So let's see, 171 euros, that's what, 200 bucks, give or take. But the vagaries of the exchange radar on any given day. And this was funny. Um, the Rags guys retweeted this. If you remember, that one Rags uh, crowdfund campaign was called Take the Money and Run. And it featured such things as the invisible variant. <laughs> I.e., you got nothing, bro. <laughs> so yeah, I'm right here with this artist. I, too, would take the 84000 and run. Not enough money to, you know, do a lot with, but you could certainly buy a house, like, in nowhere, Tennessee, and continue your fine art career for all the rich musicians down there. What was the last one? Oh, yeah, this. I already showed this to Ninja Weasel, and I showed it earlier on the stream, but... 
you know, just in case you needed a ginger in your life, Illustrator Monk has got you covered. So, there we go. Alright, let's get back to the books. Boop, there we go. Because I do want to flip through Berserker here. Enough to get a new car and put down a down payment. Yeah. I've lived in places where I could probably buy a house for like 80 grand, or at least most of a house. Then you only need like a little bit of fine art, and uh, you've got a whole house. Woo! March Hare, bro! He says, I think the most I've paid for a statue is around three to four hundred dollars. It's a full body with cycle statue of Ghost Rider. Man, that actually sounds kind of cheap when you start describing it that way. Boy, I don't think I paid that much for any piece of art that I own. <laughs> I tend to buy paintings on the cheap, man. Even the, like, actual comic book page I have hanging up, I only paid like 50 bucks for that thing. And the couple of statue things I do own, um, like I got for free. Let me grab a uh, Taru off of uh, my shelf over here. Like the creator of Exilium uh, sent me Taru for free. Like, I backed uh, the crowdfund, and he had uh, Peter Smetty just throw that in for me. I think this was like a $50, like, perk on its own or something like that. It's a really cool little statuette. So, uh, Ben is a real cool dude. And I think his uh, latest crowdfund for Exilium just wrapped the other day, but it's still in demand, because I backed it while it was in demand. So if that's your jam, go for it. It's fun sci-fi. What more do you want? All right. Uh, let's look through Berserk here. Berserker here real quick. That is one of the worst intro pages I've ever seen in a comic book. That doesn't make me want to read the book. That's an instant turnoff. I just kind of want to close the book and leave now. Ah, being drawn and quartered. It's a rough life. So what's going on here? I was young, far from home, years from home. Sometimes I showed my true nature back then, I was not well received. My first love ended painfully. Not the last time, but the first hurt the most. Ouch, dude. And it looks like your kid uh, did not make it. That's rough. Hubba hubba, I better not show the bottom of this page. Uh, in fact, I probably shouldn't scroll down, like, past where I am right now. That's, um, yeah. So, this is all about him and his relationships with people and stuff like that. And hey, I saw that movie, 47 Ronin, Keanu Reeves. Pretty fun movie. Fighting demons and all that. It's a good time. You should check that movie out. It, was, it is somewhat enjoyable, the way it blends fact and legend together. Let me look over here. Hey, the 47 Ronin pages! There you go. It was a one-time deal, says March Hare. I can't bring myself to spend that kind of money on stuff like this normally. Hey, hey, <laughs> I don't blame you, bro. I don't blame you at all. And the last book I bought today I don't know that I'd call it a really good flick, but what it is, is a really fun flick. Because there's a differentiation between fun and good, and I, uh, definitely a lot of fun, and maybe pretty good. I think I can go with pretty good. Like, I would totally give that movie, like, a 9 out of 10 in full recognition that that movie knows exactly the kind of movie it is. 
and movies that know what they are and how to be the kind of movie they want to be are pretty cool. So I got uh, Batman Adventures Continue Season 2. Oh, yeah. So we got Montoya. We got Bullock. They actually look really good. Is this the same artist? Hold on. Is this the same artist? Batman The Adventures Continue. Let me look this up. Because this doesn't look like the same artist. This guy is, like, taking time. Uh, these people, like, they look like they got gradients across their faces, like they've been airbrushed. This is looking like the actual cartoon. Let's see. Well, Wikipedia says it's like the... Illustrated by Ty Templeton. Who... Is doing this? Jordan Gibson and Monica Kubina. Okay. Okay. Wikipedia is not exactly being super helpful here with what I'm trying to look up. Probably shouldn't have went to Wikipedia. Are they going to lead you to like a better website somewhere? Like, I just want to know who worked on the dang book. Like, why is this so difficult? Art by Ty Templeton on issue 5. So that would have been the previous miniseries. Anyway, I like this art. It looks like the like the art that I would like expect for a sequel to the cartoon. Like it resembles the cartoon. What more do you want? But I don't know when they changed artists. Hold on. Maybe Comicsology listings have the artists on them, huh? Yeah, here we go. Ty Templeton. Same colorist. Ty Templeton, Ty Templeton, Ty, 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 Ty. Ty Templeton. Ty Templeton. Why is it being... It's totally being uh, divvied up differently here. Because the... Actual physical is like Batman the Adventures Continues Season 2, number whatever. Let's see. 11. And on Comixology, they're just straightly, they're just like numbered in a straight line. Okay, Ty Templeton. Oh, yeah, I remember that. So he did, like... Were there really 17 issues? Of this? I don't remember there being 17 issues of this thing. That doesn't seem right to me. Hey, let's see what Previews World says. Yeah, look at this. Number 8 of 6? I want to start screaming. I want to start screaming. So there's something like half of an issue on Comixology? So here's, yeah, Ty Templeton. Okay, so we're going through. This one doesn't say, but he's on the cover. On the cover. We've changed colorists, it looks like. Okay, here we go. Ty Templeton. Ty Templeton. Rick Bruchette. I don't know if I noticed this artist change in the previous issue. Oh, probably because it was split duties with the original artist. Pencils Gibson and Ty Templeton. Inks by Gibson. Ty T yeah. Oh, maybe Ty Templeton just did the cover? No, it says Rob Guillory did the cover. Anyway, I like the... Ah, oh, don't show my chat. I like the art. Let's just go back to that. There we go. Man, did I expose any sense of info? No, I just showed the pitiful viewer count I have. All right, cool. That doesn't matter at all then. So yeah, 
I really like the art. It actually looks like the freaking cartoon, which I think that is pretty incredible. Like they, these characters actually look like they belong to the Batman cartoon. They're spot on. Like the only way this would have got better is, you know, to get the original animators to come draw it. So congratulations. I think that I just, uh, found a book that I really like and that's pretty cool like finally <laughs> here we are like 12 issues in a year later and I'm finally finally getting the stuff that we were promised basically with issue one like it should have looked like the cartoon the character should have been on the models sheet for the cartoon instead we got like the stupid gimp masked Bane who wants that Bane yeah Bruce Tim approved this. I've been waiting on this. I was going to drop the book. I was seriously today thinking, should I tell my man, should I tell Sean, dude, stop getting me this stupid, the adventures continue and justice league infinity or whatever. Like just, just stop. It's crap. And now here I am. I'm glad I didn't do that because if we keep this artist, I think I'm going to like the book better. And please don't let Dead Man show back up in this series again. I don't want to deal with him because while that was kind of fun, it got old real, real quick. It got old super quick. It's like having Deadpool in every issue of your favorite serious book. Like, you know, maybe a little Deadpool spice is okay sometimes, depending on what he's doing. But you're going to get tired of him ruining your serious book very quickly. Hey, Quake Nerd. I'm glad you like it. I finished uh, the base game, or I finished all four, or yeah, all four episodes, and I beat uh, the boss at the end. So I've beaten Quake uh, on my Twitch stream uh, this past Sunday. So the episodes are going to start going up more frequently uh, once we get into October, because Quake is more of a scary themed game. So I'm going to try to put up uh, more episodes per week. Uh, once October gets here. But I did want to start it. Because I know you were out there. Uh, you requested I play it. And I thought, hey. Let me start giving this guy what he asked for. See, March here. You passed on the book. But you wanted to pick it up. You know. I don't know that there's a whole lot in the first. Uh, the first run. To really recommend. Batman the Adventures Continue. Like. It was kind of hovering around mediocrity. Uh, this one, with the Court of Owls stuff, uh, which is where it started, has been a little more interesting. So, you might want to... I bet your store probably still has some of these uh, Season 2 books, like, sitting on the shelf. So you might, might be able to pick that up pretty cheap. You going to play the Mission Packs? I will probably pay... Pay? I will probably pay... I can't English. I will probably play the mission packs. Yeah. Uh, I, I realized, I didn't realize it last Sunday, but I realized it uh, like right after I stopped streaming that uh, this coming Sunday is going to be the first Sunday in October. So I will actually be playing Fear 3 on Sunday. Uh, that way I can continue Fear Tober. Not Spook Tober, Ninja Weasel. You know me, bro. It's Fear Tober. Because I play Fear in October. Uh, but I'll be playing Fear 3. And depending on when I beat that, I will get back to playing Quake afterwards. So yes, you can look forward to seeing some Quake Mission Pack stuff coming out uh, later this year. Probably like uh, go up on YouTube, probably November. Probably play it like towards the end of October. Uh, I went to one of the secret levels. I got to go back and find uh, the other... Too. I found the secret level in the third yeah in the third campaign or episode or whatever you want to call it I didn't find it in the other one so I still got to go back and find it and do that stuff and so there'll be probably some standalone I don't know if I'm going to stream that or if I'm just going to like make a little video for it for each one of those but yeah that will definitely be coming up too Man, this tea's pretty good. 
pour some more on my ice. And I always get upset at you on purpose, Mr. Ninja Weasel. Oh, the lid of my beverage here has a fact on it. At birth, a Dalmatian is always pure white. I didn't know that. Now I do. I am now a Dalmatian expert. You can ask me anything you want about Dalmatians, and I will know. <laughs> the one I found is probably the easiest. Yeah, I was just like looking, and I was like, that's a weird place for a hole in the floor. And then I jumped in, and it turned out to be the secret exit. So, hey, there we go. What more can you want in life than secret exits delivered to you on Tuesday? Probably somebody has something they want. Hmm. Whew. Boy, I've been going hard. This has been a long day, man. It's been a long day. Less, uh, less tiring than last week, man. Last week was... Whew, I don't know. I almost didn't stream at all, but I kind of made myself. Let's read about this Britney Spears thing. Like, what's going on here? Father Britney Spears suspended his conservator of her estate. Oh, that, that's it? It's literally just that? The current situation is not tenable. It reflects a toxic environment which requires the suspension of Jamie Spears effective today. L.A. Superior Court Judge Brenda Penny said during a court hearing. Wow. That's some harsh stuff. I should have totally titled my stream, like, Free Britney. And then I would have got, like, all the people in. I don't know, the, the whole situation, like, what went down a decade ago seemed real shady to me. And it looks like it's real shady, so. Oh, Ninja Weasel, my dude. I'm filling you on that statement. It's been a long day, it's been a long week, and it's only Wednesday. The good news is I got Friday off. So, I got, the, oh man, OBS is doing that thing where it's, like, frozen. Okay, it looks like my voice is still going through because it suddenly unfroze. Whew, it's only Wednesday. You know, gentlemen and ladies, whoever's out there, I'm going to go through the books real quick because I don't think March Hare saw all this stuff. I know Quake Nerd probably didn't either. And then after that, I think uh, we're going to call it here. So, we already looked at uh, this one here at the end. Batman Adventures Continue Season 2. Much improved art. Berserker number five looks like it's gonna be the sad story of how he can't fall in love because all of his lovers grow old and die, leave him behind. That's some serious heartbreak, bro. Nothing continues to happen to nobody. Issue twenty. Uh, I was not a, uh, a praise. I was not impressed by what I saw when I flipped through. Robin, on the other hand, we're gonna crack this son of a gun open because I really like this two-page spread right here of just fight montage stuff. Like, I'm game. I'm down for that. Now let's see, let me go back to Quake Nerd's chat here. Scourge, Armagon has three. Dissolution of Eternity has none. Which is past has one. And he doesn't know anything about dimensions of the machine. Ooh. But yeah, I really like this uh, two-page spread. Because it's just like a bunch of people beating a bunch of people up. For no reason. Twin fight tonight! Hey, and they're blondes. Hold on, I have a gift for blondes. Boom! Yeah, put on that tiger mask. Let's play some Hotline Miami, baby. I really want to play more Hotline Miami. But that's just me. So Robin 6 looks like it's going to be a bunch of fun. And then I picked up uh, from the from the City 5 Stint Bin some free stuff. Got a Malibu book. Got another book out of this Eclipso storyline that I didn't already have. And finally, from Majestic Comics comes Legacy, number one. So you know, like, I will be able to pay for my kid's college with this book right here. <laughs> oh, dude, March Hare, my man. Let us all give him a thumbs up for his acquisitions. He says... I scored a couple of grails today. Uncanny X-Men 103. 
and Amazing Spider-Man 121. Let me pop into the emoji list. Is there a thumbs up emoji? There's got to be. Him. Wait, here we go. We'll give you a dab. There you go, bro. You got a dab from me because I can't find the thumbs up. Thumb. Hey, here's a thumbs up. Oh yeah, you get one of those too. That's how cool you are. A dab and a thumbs up. Congratulations on getting that stuff, man. Uh, the more I buy comics, the more I think I should just go get, uh, you know, save up and just buy like one good book when I'm ready for it, as opposed to reading new stuff, because so much new stuff's just not worth it anymore. Quake Nerd says, on Monday, his town starts setting up Christmas lights in the park. Dude, it's not even Halloween yet. Tell them to slow down. We've got two holidays between now and Christmas. We got Halloween here in the middle of Feartober, and we got no like Thanksgiving. We got Turkey Day in November. You can't just skip all the way to Christmas lights. And March Hare says... He was shocked to see them at his shop. Hadn't been in in weeks. Hey, that is dope for you, man. I am really happy you got some books that you really appreciate. Uh, that's more than I think a lot of people can say when they buy comic books these days. You know, you're at least getting something that you want. And some people, they're just buying Spider-Man because they've been buying Spider-Man for 30 years. I don't know why you would do that. You got a lot of lights and you got a deadline. Okay. All right. Well, more power to your park. I hope your town gets that all done before it's too late. And I think, gentlemen, I ought to use this line. Wait, let me go back. And I think everybody, I'm going to call it here. If you haven't already hit that like button and you made it this far in the stream, please hit that like button. I appreciate it. If you like what you see, you know, hit that subscribe button and that little bell for notifications. Otherwise, I hope to see all of you wonderful people who have chosen to spend your time with me next time. And, uh, yeah, that's it, everybody. You all take care of yourselves. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night, whatever you got going on. If you're setting up Christmas lights, I hope that goes wonderfully and you don't have crazy tangles because, oh my gosh, tangled Christmas lights are maybe not literally the worst, but kind of the worst. So have a great one, and uh, ciao. I'm going to actually end with the... Uh, oh, hey! A M. Anthony just subscribed here on YouTube. Well, thank you so much for that subscription. You snuck that in, like, right at the end of the stream. That's awesome. I appreciate it. Much love. I'm going to flip the little gif, my favorite gif in the whole internet right here on... And we're just going to disturb people as this college girl puts on a tiger mask. And then we're going to be out of here. So, one last wave. Bye-bye.